Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents... X minus one... Tonight's story, The Map Makers, by Frederick Pohl. Damage report, Mr. Bunner. Hi, sir. Three bulkheads penetrated in AC and D sections, patched in airtight. Mm. How is Lieutenant Groden? He isn't good. He's unconscious. His head is all bandaged up. There's a million to one chance. I don't think it's happened in 300 years. Meteoric matter hitting a ship in hyperspace. Mr. Bonner, would you please have the air vents operated to clear the control room of kerosene fumes? Mr. Lorch. Aye, sir. Take a row, he man the vent. I'll have a half-G spin, if you please. We can use a little gravity when we figure this out. Aye, sir. Engine room. Half G spin for simulated gravity. How about the Atlas? That's the worst damage, sir. Celestial Atlas is destroyed. Hmm. The Atlas was the only record on board of the hyperspace configuration. The total loss? It's dead, sir. Oh. What was his name? The Atlas? Uh, Spawn. He had a sister in Seattle, I think. The pass orders for burial at the afterlock. I see. And, Mr. Bonner, have all officers assemble in the wardroom for an emergency meeting as soon as we are secured for normal space. At ease, gentlemen. Gentlemen, we are in trouble. We are in the soup. And we're a long way from home. Obama, would you get me a bulb of coffee, please? Now, nobody is going to come and get us out of this. We'll have to do it ourselves, if we can. Chicarelli is trying to get us a fix. But I can tell you right now, we are not close to the solar system. There you are, sir. Oh, thank you. That meteor dropped us out of hyperspace in the middle of a jump. Consequently, there isn't a constellation in the sky that you or I or anybody else ever saw before. We might be a hundred light years from home, or we might be ten thousand. Well, sir, what about our records? They went with the Atlas. We can't retrace our steps, not in hyperspace. Sir? Yes, what is it, Lorch? Burial detail standing by at the afterlock. Very well, we'll get down there in a few minutes. I'm afraid the Atlas will have to wait. He's a mess, isn't he? Cover him up. Haven't you got any respect? Yeah, to laugh. Spawn, I mean. Look at his head. They spent four years stuffing it with all those equations under that hypno machine. Did you ever see him working a jump? Oh, my jump station is engine pit three. There's enough to curl your hair. You know what it's like doing jump. No lights, no fluorescence even, just those kerosene lamps smoking. Everything looking bent and twisted. You can't tell what you're seeing. Well, Spawn stands right up there next to the captain in a trance. And he's spouting numbers and times and equations. And all the time, his eyes are shut. He's out like a light. He's sure out for good now. Funny, he never knew how to count up his pay when he was conscious. When he's out, he's as good as a five-story computer. I never could figure it. It's kind of creepy. 
Why don't they take a regular machine to do hyperspace navigating? Well, you ought to know. You just lifted them. Spawn weighed 130 ring and wet. A computer would weigh maybe three or four tons. Ship couldn't lift it. We got computers on board. Yeah, electronic computers. What's the first order before it jumped? Douse all electric gear. Sure. The Terra One blew higher than the kite before they found it out. You don't use juice in hyperspace. Not if you want to get out of it. So you can't use a computer during a jump. That's where Spawn came in. I can't use him in a jump anymore either. Yeah, that's for sure. Hey, listen. That's the brass coming to dump him. I gotta get back to my patient. Put out that cigarette and try to look solemn. <laughs> Roderick. Oh. How is he, Conboy? Not so good. Oh. I gave him three ampules of neomorph in the last two hours. That's twice the normal dosage. Mm. Let me see. Oh. Oh. Mm. Lieutenant Groden's mm. the navigator, isn't he? I mean, what happens with him all cut up in the head? The captain is a trained navigator. Well, that doesn't do us any good in jump, does it? Not without the Atlas to do the calculator. Oh. Look, our job down here is to keep Lieutenant Groden out of pain. We'll leave the rest of the bridge, all right? Sorry, sir. It's just that Corelli in the chart room told me he can't locate one of those stars in his chart. And what's more... Oh, convoy. Yes, sir. Hand me that ampule. Now, now here it is. Now, now here it is. Recorders made second-class Eklund report to the ward room. Recorders made Eklund report to the ward room. All right, Eklund, come in. Recorder's mate Eklund reporting, sir. Stand at ease, Eklund. You heard about recorder's mate Spahn? Yes, sir. I was with Charlie when... Bonner, get Eklund a chair, please. Yes, sir. Here you are. I'm all right, sir. You know that Spahn's operation was essential to navigation in a jump? No, sir. I mean, I don't know much of anything until I'm indexed. Yes, of course. You were rated a ship's library and log. Yes, sir. Spahn read his calibrations up to this point into you? I suppose so, sir. I'm in trance when I record. Yes, of course. Now we're going to need those records. Are you ready? Yes, sir. The key word is index. All right, Eklund. Index. There she goes. Takes about 30 seconds for full trance. Uh Uh-huh. You know, Bonner, this is risky. Trying to backtrack on hyperspace equations by dead reckoning. A centimeter off of the figures might put us a thousand kilometers in hyperspace. And anything up to a million light years when we dropped back into normal. I wish that meteor had gotten me instead of the Atlas. She's in trance, sir. All right, Eklund. Ship's log. Journey day one. Jump one. Journey day one. Jump one. Normal space coordinates, 345-674-65, sub-456, time, 4356.98. Ensign Lotz reporting on watch, sir. No maneuvering during watch, no change in operating status. I, uh, I haven't made an entry for course and position, Mr. Bonner. Just put down unknown in big letters. Yes, sir. You didn't get anything out of Eklund? Oh, sure. We got the absolute magnitudes and the stellar distances of half the stars in the galaxy. And a short course in the geodesics of the n-dimensional space. We didn't get a road map. What does that thermometer read? It's all right, sir. I adjusted heat level. What? The welding torches had the temperature up five degrees, so I ordered air valved into the expansion line. Mr. Lorch, you were bleeding air? Well, yes, sir, to cool shit. What, you're a fool. What? You valve off air as though we had a whole world of it. Did it ever occur to you we might be in space a long time and we might run out of air? But, sir, that doesn't happen. I mean... No, not when you can jump. Not when Earth is an hour or a day away, but we can't jump. You just leave those air valves alone. We'll need every molecule. Groden, can you hear me? Oh, it's South Broadway. Can you hear me? Uh, 
That's right. All, right. all right, don't talk. You've been hurt. A meteorite got the atlas and something got you right across the eyes. Drops of molten metal. You're blind, at least for now. Oh, oh. We can pick you up from the eye bank when we get back on earth. The atlas. Atlas. Dead. Now we got enough problems. I've got to take the bandages off now. Eh? Ah. Can you... Can you see anything? Oh. I'm going to pass the light in front of your eyes. You tell me if you can see anything. No. No. Nothing but it hurts. It hurts. All right, convoy. Hand me that ampule. Secure for jump, Mr. Bonner. Secure. Engine room. Damage aft. Damage forward. Generator station. Radiation control. Cargo hold one. Two. Three. Four. Men's quarters aft. You ready, Eklund? Yes, sir. Women's Have you ever been on the bridge during a jump? No, sir. Well, it's tricky. Your eyes lie to you. You see things that aren't there. I don't know how much you will get in trance. Nothing, sir. I black out completely. Oh, good. Ship secured, sir. Ship secured, sir. Kill the spin. Engine room, kill spin. Ship's company, stand by for free fall. Free fall. Check off. Chronometers wound and synchronized. Kerosene lamps lit. Navigator. Aye. Communicator. Aye. Atlas. I'm sorry. Ready, Eklund? Aye. Put her under. Eklund. Index. Proceed, Mr. Bonner. Main circuit breakers open. Main circuit breakers open. Electricity cut. Eklund's in trance. Well, we'll give it a try. Now, huh, Bonner? Backtrack on our jumps. Yeah. Maybe it'll work out. Maybe. Stand by to jump. Stand by to jump. Stand by to jump. We'll go when she's straight up. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Jump. money even if you win. You're trying to do chicken out. Corelli says they got a fix after the jump. What are we worried about? Deal. They got a fix, all right. 15,000 light years from Sal. Shuffle, shuffle. He says that's the way it is in hyperspace. Distances haven't got anything to do with anything unless you, unless you can navigate when you're in jump, and we can't. Hey, when did Lorch make his rounds? Why? I'm going to take off my jumper. It's hot. Yeah, it's going to get hotter. You can't cool ship by bleeding air. Every time the jets blast, every time the cook fries an egg, the ship gets just a little hotter. Don't mention it. Every time the jump generators turn over, every time you light a match, that gets us hotter and hotter. Hey, what are you doing? Taking off my skibby shirt. Deal. Is he, Mr. Broderick? Mm. You can tell the captain that Lieutenant Groden remains unimproved. Mm. How is he really? 
He's working up to some real damage. The kind I can't handle. It's in his head. I had to tell him his sight was gone. Unless we can get back to an eye bank within ten days. You can patch in an eye, but once the nerve has deteriorated, you can't replace it. Did he take it hard? Worse. Worse. He didn't say a word. I know that man is in pain. The convoy found his pills hidden under his pillow. He wouldn't take them. He just lay there without a sound. Until we went into the jump. Then he screamed his head off. What's wrong with him? Who knows? If I had an electroencephaloscope on board, then I'm lucky they let me have a mini x-ray. Yeah, what did doctors do before they had those gadgets? Shoot the patients? No. It was like I could run an old-fashioned verbal psychoanalysis on him. I might pick something significant out of a sludge. Maybe five or six months. That's what they did before they had the EES. <sighs> what time is it? Oh, 7.56. I've got sick call in 20 minutes. Heat exhaustion, dizzy spells, skin rashes. I'm running out of aspirin and salt tablets. Yeah. Bonner had me with a ten-man detail defluffing the filter traps on the air circulators. <laughs> it's a lucky thing spaceships aren't painted. They'd have us chipping paint. No. Now hear this. Mr. Mr. Broderick, report to the bridge. Mr. Broderick, report to the bridge. How am I supposed to do that? I got two call men down with heat prostration. I'll look after Groden, Mr. Broderick. Uh, maybe I could give him an alcohol rub? Thanks, Lodge. Oh, by the way, uh, that alcohol. Yes? It's denatured. Here's the problem, Mr. Broderick. We have fuel for just under 40 minutes of rocket blast at standard thrust. That will bring our overall temperature up to 60 degrees centigrade. That's the maximum the human body can stand, right? Mm-hmm. That's about 140 Fahrenheit. Well, it hits that on Earth in a couple of places and around the Dead Sea, but it isn't sustained heat. It drops considerably after dark. We'll hope we find ourselves out of this before we hit 60 degrees. If we don't, at least we won't starve or suffocate. All right, gentlemen, Mr. Broderick, you can prepare for increasing heat casualties as we proceed. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Bonner. Secure for jump. My eyes. My eyes. Now take it easy, Groton. Convoy. Convoy. Yes, sir. Where's the doctor? He stayed on the bridge with the jump. Well, what do we do for Groden? During the jump, I can't even see him. I don't think he hurt himself. We better just wait till the jump's over. My eyes. They lied. They lied to me. They lied. I can see it. The master pattern, I... I can see it. No. No, not like seeing, like... Like knowing. That's... That's Lorch. And Roderick's on the bridge. And the captain. And Earth. And the sun, I, I can see them. And buckle the straps, I... I've got to get up to the bridge. The jump is almost over. I'll be blind again. If the Lord sees me, he'll think it's jump hallucinations. They're lost. But I'm not. I can see. The whole universe. I can see. Jump, jump, jump completed. Secure our normal space. Groden, Groden, come back here. Now, what are you doing out in the passage? Convoy, sir. Come on, give me a hand. Now, how did he get out here and jump? He's blind. Navigation report negative, sir. Is there a fix? No, sir. 
Corelli thinks you can get a triangulation on an extra galactic nebula. That'll take time. So what's the temperature? 45. We don't have time. We'll have to keep on. If we don't end up within a light year of Sol, we're cooked. <laughs> Literally. So at your convenience, we'll take another jump. So we've got to take a break. The only way to handle the temperature is frequent rests and liquids. Will ten minutes be enough? Well, I suppose so. Mr. Bonner, have steward sections issue whatever they have. Juices, water. There's no point in saving it for any length of time. We have about 24 minutes of rocket time before the hull heats up to 60 degrees. Is there any reasonable chance? Mr. Broderick, we've tried dead reckoning from the records. But in hyperspace, we can't follow them accurately, not without Atlas. I'm timing the blasts from my pulse, because you can't trust reading a clock unless you can touch it. When we jump, I might as well be blind. <laughs> Easy. Get him back on the bed. Easy, Conway. Easy. Oh, I got his arm. I can't figure how he got out there. I saw him, but I thought it was a jump hallucination. Easy, Mr. Gordon. Now, just fly back. No, no, no. I can see. I can see. Is that possible? Well, look at him, Mr. Lorch. His eyes are covered with bandages. He's blind. Ten minutes is up, Captain. All right. Secure for jump. I had to assign three more men to each generator. The crew couldn't handle the manual clutch and the heat. Very well. Proceed. Chronometers wound and synchronized. Kerosene lamps lit. Navigator. Aye. Ready, Eklund? Aye. Index. Proceed, Mr. Bonner. Main circuit breakers open. Stand by to jump. Stand by to jump. Straight up. Four, three, two, one, jump. Thirty seconds to full velocity, sir. You never can get used to it. You can hear, you can touch, but your eyes lie. The photons and electrons of Cherry Vision have some crazy mathematics of their own. I know, sir. I remember once I saw a row of monkeys sitting on the control console. I wondered what they were before hyperspace twisted them into monkeys. Ten seconds. Yeah, that's what I mean. Now it seems as if I'm seeing Groden up here in the bridge, and I know very well he's down in sick bay asleep. Captain. Captain. Who is that? Lorch? Yes, sir. You're not on bridge watch. Captain, he's really here. It's not a hallucination. What are you talking about? Groden. He's really here, sir. Lord, what's the idea of bringing him up here during jump? I only brought him to the forward lock, sir. Then he brought me. Broderick, is this some kind of heat exhaustion? I'm telling you, sir. We went into jump, and I couldn't see anything that made sense. Just twisting shadows and lights, you know. But Groden took my hand and led me right up here along the passage. Blind. Not in hyperspace. Not in jump. Then he can say, Captain, he must be in intense pain. Yes, yes, it's painful. All right. But I can see the whole plan, the whole pattern. It makes sense to me now. I can see the stars and the ship and the earth at the same time. The equations on hyperspace. I can see them the way you can see a triangle or a circle. I can see the earth. And I can tell you how far it is. Broden, you mean you can pilot us home? Yes, I can't. All right, Mr. Groden. Take over this ship. Number three pattern. Fire. Velocity. Five, six, three, seven, four, eight. Relative thrust, seven, eight, six, seven. Counter blast for two seconds. Pattern, six, five, seven. Blast. Cut. 
All right. Hit normal space at mark. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Mark. Look out, he's going to fall. Yeah, I've got him. He saw. He saw in hyperspace. He navigated by line of sight in hyperspace. We'll have to order a stretcher up. He's blind again. Stern system, 239 degrees, 45 elevation. Magnified by 50 on forward screen. That's not so. No, but it's a place to land. There's a planet there. It's just normal. You can land in cool ship and replenish air. Mr. Bonner. Take her down to atmosphere and have planetology section start to check it out. Aye, sir. Anson Lodge, report down to planetology. Engine room, landing routine. Why didn't we hit Earth on the chump road? Why? Just as well, Mr. Broderick. If the planet checks out, it's a whole world for colonization. Sure, sure, but it'll be two weeks before you can replenish ship and catalyze fuel. There won't be any new eyes for Lieutenant Groden then. The optic nerves will be gone too far. He'll never have eyes again. I knew that before I brought you up here. Ready, Blanche, for skip deceleration in pit three. You mean, Groden, you could have brought us back to Earth? In two jumps. Then why didn't you? I can't allow a man to go blind because of phony heroics. Do you want to know how many Sol-type systems there are within 5,000 light years? I can tell you. Want to know what the universe looks like in hyperspace? I can tell you that, too. Only I can't describe it. The whole thing is as orderly and chartable as our own space. And I could see it. All of it. And you offer me eyes. Captain, we have a quadrant of hyperspace to chart. I can see during the jumps. Captain, I... Look out. He's still in pain. I can see to the end of the galaxy. And beyond. I know. But in the meantime, Mr. Broderick. I sir. When we take off again, Lieutenant Groden will be in command during jump. He will handle this ship. And at his direction, we will chart hyperspace. But in the meantime, will you kindly lead him to his quarters? You have just heard X-1 presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features Dead Ringer by Lester Del Rey, a fascinating story about a man who learned that there was nothing on Earth which could set him free, least of all the truth. Galaxy Magazine on your newsstand today. Tonight by transcription, X-1 has brought you The Map Makers. A story from the pages of Galaxy written by Frederick Pohl and adapted for radio by Ernest Kenoy. Featured in the cast were John Larkin, Ed Prentice, Bob Hastings, Tom Collins, Dick Hamilton, Burford Hamden, Raleigh Bester, and Carl Frank. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. <laughs>